Oh, good afternoon, everybody. Again, thank you very much to Gary and Justin for organising today and um, for inviting uh, me along to speak with uh, Julia. Uh, my name is Alastair Yeomans, and I'm from uh, this organisation here, which is the Silver Foundation. And uh, we were set up about five years ago. And it was with a view to um, give something, trying to give some support to British woodlands to try and understand how we can improve the woodland condition. Now, we know there's a lot been talked about this in the, the press over the last couple of years. Um, but the, the two people who set it up, Sir Martin Wood and Gabriel Hemery, were able to um, sort of see this and understood that there was an issue that needed to be addressed. Now, that's not to say that there weren't other very good organisations out there. There were and there still are. There's the likes of the um, Small Woods Association, or Small Woods, I believe Phil's in the, um, uh, Phil Tidy's in the audience today, the Royal Forestry Society and many other uh, organisations as well. And what we really tried to do was um, map out the landscape and see how we could work with these other organisations, not compete in any way, but actually um, get a consensus of how we can move forward. So a lot of our work has um, been very mindful of uh, these other organisations and developing technology that um, hopefully benefits these other organisations. Anyway, we, um, we set up with a, a view to revive Britain's wood culture. And how did we come about that? Well, we, we came from our origins of the Silver Foundation were, were a think tank called Forestry Horizons. So when we first started up, we, we started thinking and we, we thought, well, maybe we should read some books. So we read Roger Deacon's Wild Wood, and he started to um, get the, the notion that wood is something special to man. And the gentleman who spoke earlier in the, the audience over there, I think, um, encapsulated that very nicely by saying he was actually prepared to almost drop out of the, um, off the grid, as it were, which I am very envious of you. <laughs> and. Um, and uh, apply himself to a, a true woodland culture, as it were. Anyway, Roger Deacon discusses in his book, and he even um, talks about the, in some Eastern cultures, where wood is considered as the fifth element. We then even read some poetry. We, uh, W. H. Auden, stop the clocks. Well, I think this has been often quoted, this uh, culture is no better than its woods, but actually it's... Uh, it's very insightful, and of course some people will say, well, what does that mean? But I spent uh, 45 minutes um, listening to Al Gore speak in Oxford a couple of weeks ago, and he turned around and at the end of it sort of said, well, you know, us as a responsible society, we have to look after our environment. Well, maybe W.H. Jordan knew something well ahead of time. And so Silver Foundation, we have a, had our strap line and we created it, it was uh, Reviving Britain's Wood Culture. And um, the definition, the stewardship of woodlands for the use of wood produce for a sustainable future. <clears throat> and then came the public forest estate sell-off. And after, which Dougal um, uh, described very clearly, and after that um, uh, U-turn, um, there was a, a collective from the sector put together an independent panel of um, the great and the good of forestry. And they came up with a very conclusive report and they, they agreed and said, well, yes, we need to dr drive the revival of a woodland culture. And then as Dougal said, the, the government then produced a policy statement in early, um, ja in January 2013, um, saying that the government will work alongside civil society to develop this woodland culture. And then, gratefully, grown in Britain, through Dr. Bonfield and Dougal's work, picked up the, the baton. And again, they very much are working towards creating a strong wood culture. So I, um, I thought to myself, well, I'll, hang on a moment. I remember we were, we were discussing this with uh, Gabriel, who's my colleague, Dr. Gabriel Hemery, uh, way back in 2008. And we, we'd been thinking about, well, what actually does a, a wood culture mean? And we... Uh, thought, well, perhaps it has a hierarchy of needs. Well, at the bottom, uh, you'll see the word wood chain, and it was, again, alludes very much to what Dougal was um, talking about, which is this um, movement of wood through, a, uh, through an industry uh, or through the sector. 
And as the uh, wood flows through the sector, value is added to that timber. And of course, as we work our woods in, a, in the appropriate way, we also start to benefit from the ecosystem services or enhanced ecosystem services. And we'll look at what those mean in a, in a moment. And certainly from Silver's point of view, one of our charitable um, objects is education. We ran a project called One Oak, which engaged with um, many primary schools in the Oxfordshire area, where we actually took about 200 children to a woodland and felled an oak tree in front of them. Some people were crying. <laughs> Other people, these little seven-year-old boys, their eyes lit up green and sort of grew horns and said, cut it down. <laughs> But ultimately, that was what it was about. And um, we, uh, through this education, certainly we hope that uh, an appreciation will erupt from our, uh, our, uh, our wood chain so that we as foresters and the woodlands get the recognition that they deserve. So this is a rather abstract um, a representation of what a wood culture is. But what does this, what does this slide tell us? other than that it's very easy to a forest using PowerPoint. <laughs> I, I can do a lot more very quickly, a click of a button. <laughs> anyway, we, uh, certainly we have a city here, urban environment, and we have in the, uh, to the right-hand side uh, um, a, a, a virtual woodland forest scape. And we'd like to see timber products flowing from this woodland. And we'd also like to um, make sure that uh, the money is returned and that a viable economy is built on these timber products. And of course, as I said before, the, um, there's a, a host of ecosystem services that um, also come from these woodlands, and that's um, flood protection. So we know that if there's a, certainly from work that's been done in New York State, if there's a, uh, an increase in tree cover, in the catchment, it actually provides flood catchment to um, the cities downstream, or sorry, flood protection to the cities downstream. Landscape, carbon sequestration, improved habitats, and of course the historic elements of our, uh, or, of our, our woodlands, and that leads on to the sort of cultural uh, ecosystem services which uh, feeds onto recreation. People have places to go from the city to um, enjoy nature. But I was thinking, well, hang on a moment, I, I, I live in Oxford, I'm very lucky, and as I was walking through Oxford, I thought to myself, well, we as foresters, we can get together and have a forestry loving. That's what we're in. <laughs> we all know that we appreciate trees and woodlands, but what about these people in the city? What about this sort of divide between the rural and the, the cityscape, as it were? How, how, how can we get our message across to them? And I thought to myself, well, whilst wandering around Oxford, and for the observant, you'll notice that that's Oxford's skyline. How can we do this? And I thought, well, certainly grown in Britain, um, they, they're doing a fantastic job on getting that message out, which is we have a wonderful woodland resource. We have a fantastic forestry sector. How can we promote that and actually get that um, message across to um, the general public? And so whilst wandering around Oxford, and I thought, well, how can we really do this? And, uh, and I'm very lucky. Um, I managed to study forestry at Oxford about 10 years ago. I managed to sneak under the academic radar, and they let me in. And um, I'm still able to go to quite a lot of events at the, uh, the, the Smith School for um, Enterprise and the Environment, for example. And I went, to, I went to an event there recently, and it was uh, very much looking at um, what, uh, what can business do for, um, for improving the sustainability of uh, the environment and business activities? And whilst I was there, um, there was a book being promoted, and it's called the, the Turnaround Challenge. And it was Business in the City of the Future. And I thought, fantastic. And it's hot off the press. It's been um, produced by a chap called uh, Mick Blowfield, who's, uh, who uh, works at the Smith School and uh, a gentleman called Leo Johnson, who's Boris's brother, Boris Johnson's brother. Now, whilst Boris is dangling from zip lines, waving great British flags, <laughs> Leo Johnson's selling his sustainability consultancy to PricewaterhouseCooper and then writing books in the ivory towers of Oxford. 
Boris doesn't seem quite so clever anymore. <laughs> anyway, um, so I looked at this book and I, I, uh, I thought, fantastic, I had the fly for the book and I thought, well, I'll, I'll scurry off to the bookshop and buy a copy. That's what people in Oxford do. They scurry between bookshops. <laughs> Giving each other nods of, nods of approval, depending what latest philosophic text is under your arm. Don't get caught out and have a Nick Hornby. <laughs> anyway, so I looked at this, um, this book and I thought, well, fantastic. I'll, um, I'll read through it. And I actually cheated a little bit. I, I got my iPad and I, uh, I downloaded the, the book on the iPad. Sorry, pulp industry. <clears throat> and I, uh, I thought, well, hang on a moment. I've, I've got a search engine here. I can, I can put in some, some various... Uh, some various um, uh, word searches. And so I thought, well, that's good. And so, well, okay. So I started to read the book, and um, the book was, was basically setting out three scenarios. They road mapped the future. And the three scenarios were this one was um, business as usual, which was the sort of city as we understand it today, which was a, uh, a very much fossil fuel dependent. And uh, as he points out, it's a. a uh, a city based on mass production and decreasing resilience, and they use the example of New or Orleans when uh, Hurricane Katrina hit. They then talk about Siberia, which is a, uh, a new sort of green business as usual, the censored but censored city, so everything's super smart. And one of these cities is actually being built at the moment in South Korea, Songdo City. And again, they describe that. And then thirdly, they talked about the dispersed city, which is a city of people design and want, that, that people design and want, and it's small-scale manufacturing, microgrids, and it's very much a city designed by the people, for the people, and it's without a blueprint. So anyway, as I said earlier, I thought, well, this is fantastic. The dispersed city sounds like the sort of city that a, a forestry sector could thrive in. I thought, well, great, I'm going to take my, um, my search engine on the iPad, and I'm going to put in uh, trees. And we got three hits. And I thought, well, that's OK. It could be good. It could be good. You know, this, we believe in this room that forestry has some tremendous answers for sustainability. I thought, well, I wonder what these three hits are. And the first one was a branch hitting against the power cable that caused the largest power outage in USA history, <laughs> an estimated cost of $6 billion. And I thought, mm, yeah, they haven't quite got the idea of wood culture. <laughs> I thought, maybe trees, is, maybe trees isn't the right thing. Perhaps it's wood. Wood, yes, I'll write wood. And yes, three hits again. And in fairness, they, uh, did, they did manage to write half a sentence on wood products. And it was a, uh, a little um, industry based on biomass in, in Austria. And then I thought, well, that's great. And actually, wood was pretty good. It got three hits, which was uh, one more than Woody Allen. <laughs> <clears throat> who gave a quote about the, the, the challenge that mankind faces, basically despairing, a crossroads of which other road we go down, we're in trouble. And then I thought, well, I'll put forests in, that's not bad. And then I got one hit, and I think, well, maybe this is it. Maybe this is the, the silver bullet. And it was in the context of geoengineering. I think geoengineering, you know, the notion of putting um, <clears throat> Uh, shades up into space to reduce sunlight or carbon sequestration is a, a very dodgy area. So I thought, no, 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 that's not what wood culture is about. And I thought, well, what about timber? And timber got a zero. And I thought, oh, this isn't right. I thought, okay, that's it. I'm going to go for it. I'm going for broke. I'm going to write sustainable forestry. And I got one hit. And I thought, maybe this is it. And I looked at the heading, things that never happened. <laughs> So I thought to myself, where is the love? <laughs> so anyway, I thought, to, I, I, having read this book and, and thinking, well, hang on a moment, there are actually some fantastic things um, starting to happen in, um, in forestry and where forestry is really starting to um, demonstrate to business um, a good way forward. And uh, then it, of course, occurred to me that actually um, the work that we're doing with B&Q and a lot of the principles that have grown in Britain is... Um, based upon are actually extolling these virtues. 
And I just put this at the bottom, um, by the way, a, a first class book, because I'm fairly aware that this is being videoed and I really don't want to go up against Leo Johnson's solicitors. So, <laughs> <laughs> so Leo, it's fantastic. <laughs> Oh, you can edit it out, okay. <laughs> anyway, so the Goodwoods project. So what I tried to do there was just give um, a little bit of um, context of what a wood culture is, how it could potentially relate to um, a future sustainable business models, and, and frankly, the, uh, the dispersed city mod model that um, I talked at at the end. I think a lot of the work that B&Q is doing and um, represented graphically in Julia's uh, presentation really um, helps depict what perhaps one of these dispersed cities where people are really involved and there isn't this divide between the financialized economy and the, the production economy, which um, the gentleman, the woodland owner um, over here uh, pointed out earlier on. So good words for people, for nature. So what is good words? What, um, what did we try to set out to do? Well, the first thing was based on the My Forest Service, which is a, um, a woodland management tool, a free online woodland management tool that the Silver Foundation um, have developed, was to provide 200 woodland visits by professional foresters and enable um, woodland owners to create a, um, a woodland management account, which is the basis for a woodland management plan. Secondly, to create a woodland star rating so that we can actually um, let people um, a, understand the benefits of woodland management and for the good work that the people in this room are doing actually be able to communicate that onwards to the public. And thirdly, we've held a number of communication ed and um, education events, one which was uh, last weekend and there'll be another one in the East area in uh, two weeks' time. Uh, Jude Hassel from Lantern, will, uh, who is here, will have further details if um, you're interested. So, my forest. Well, my forest is one of the things that we set up um, early on, and essentially it's a woodland management planning tool which enables woodland owners to uh, identify their woodland, map it, start to carry out an inventory, and if they so choose to do so, create a management plan, or hopefully link with an agent um, to create a management plan, and then also the opportunity to market the um, timber products on a local basis. Um, it's been going now for about three, four years, and we have uh, over a thousand woodland owners registered across the country. Uh, and um, we also have a, uh, about 360 odd uh, businesses as well. And as I said before, it's very much uh, there's been a number of agents who've said in the past, and I, I completely understand where they're coming from. It's hang on a moment, if you just providing a, a tool for woodland owners to short circuit past the, the forestry sector. What I say in response to that, absolutely not. Forestry is a, is a very technical subject. We all know that. And what we've tried to do is give um, woodland owners at least enough of a, um, a, a step up to start mapping their woodland. And then we give them the opportunity to link with um, agents. And there's a, a register of uh, woodland agents and other wood using businesses on the, the My Forest system. So we really hope and we very much see agents as a vital, vital um, element of the, um, the wood chain or a wood culture. So as I say, it's um, essentially a, a woodland management tool and it uh, makes GIS simple. I know it's fairly simple because I'm able to use it and any GIS system I've used in the past has tied me in knots. So um, I, uh, I, I hope if you do choose to use it that it's something that uh, will be of benefit to you and we're always looking for feedback um, in terms of user experiences so please feel free to contact if you do have any um, comments. And as I say, uh, there is a management planning uh, functionality in there and it's very much with a view to um, agents being able to support woodland owners to create that management plan. So. How did we uh, go about Goodwoods? Well, working with um, the uh, bioregional and Lantern, we set up a network, and the network looks pretty much like this, which is um, seven organizations in green along the top who helped us go out and find uh, woodland owners who were in need of uh, help based on criteria of uh, 
uh, management criteria or under management criteria, and then um, work with a, a range of uh, agents and uh, woodland NGOs across the southeast and east of England to actually deliver this uh, advice to the woodland owner. So just to give you an idea, here's some of the people. This is uh, Jude and Amy from Lantern, who are the, uh, the delivery partner, who actually do a lot of the work coordinating this network. Rich, or aka rich.com, who's the person who designs and develops the uh, My Forest website. Paul Orsi, who's a colleague of mine who's uh, come from Blenheim Forest, uh, sorry, from Blenheim Estate. He was the um, Rural Development and Forestry Manager there to um, work on this project with us as well. Uh, in th this area, we've worked with uh, Suffolk County Council with Gary and uh, Nikki Rowbottom, who's in the, uh, the audience here today. In Surrey, with the Surrey Wildlife Trust. In the east, again, with Matt Waller, Ho Heavy Horses, who's actually gone out and delivered some of the advice. David Reese, the Oxfordshire Woodland Project. Dan Kanasha, a young forester who's uh, just graduated a couple of years ago from forestry, so we've supported him in his early career. And uh, Lawrence Crow, there you can see he's working with um, uh, Chessington World of Adventures to help them um, provide support for managing their woodlands. So what does a Goodwoods visit result in? Well, it results in a My Forest account, so people then have at least the basic understanding of what their woodland is. They have it mapped into the various compartments. There's a, a mini report, which is very much based on management planning speak, as it were. And uh, it sets out um, a vision for the woodland and also um, some actions in terms of next steps to start getting the woodland um, uh, you know, working in the way that the, uh, the vision sets out. So there's a small report. And then we had the, the Woodland uh, Star Rating as well, which you we developed um, with uh, b and support. And that was very much a light touch set of questions, and it was just really to give people an idea of uh, where they were, just to measure the, the activities and help them understand what the UK forestry standard actually is. Now, what we try to do at Silver is link as much of our, our work as possible to um, evidence. So we uh, carried out a, a survey in uh, 2012. It was called the British Woodlands uh, Survey. And two of the main findings we found from that survey was that um, what woodland owners were looking for was one-to-one uh, -one advice. And certainly for the smaller woodlands under 30 hectares, and one of the main aims for owning the woodland was personal pleasure. So the Woodland Star Rating, certainly we've um, tried to make it light touch and, dare I say it, almost fun so that people can actually use it and measure their um, progress as they go through time. And certainly the one-to-one -one advice has been delivered through the uh, Goodwoods project. Uh, I should say that the, the report from that survey um, is now online. It's on the Royal Institute of Chartered Surveyors um, website. It was done... Um, in uh, partnership with the uh, Silver Foundation and a host of um, uh, forestry organizations, which you'll see here, ranging from the, uh, the Woodland Trust Forestry Commission through to um, uh, CLA. Mike um, Seville here was on the uh, um, Board of Advisors. So what's the Woodland Star Rating? Well, it's, it's a self-assessment scheme based on the UK forestry standard. And what we've tried to do is take the UK forestry standard and its eight tenets and link those with how they actually relate to ecosystem services delivery. There's been a lot of um, talk recently about the importance of um, ecosystem services, and quite rightly so, our, our natural capital, our woodlands, our rivers, chalk downlands, they provide a lot of... Um, uh, benefit to society or external benefits, the economists would say. And how can we actually start to measure these and um, appreciate them and relate it to business activity? So what we did was take the, the tenets of the UK forestry standard and match it to the um, four pillars of ecosystem services, which is provisioning, which is basically timber and um, woodland products regulating services, which is the carbon sequestration and flood regulation, 
supporting services, which is supporting habitats, and cultural services, which we alluded to earlier on, which is historic and recreation um, benefits that uh, our natural environment uh, confer. And so, essentially, it's about woodland management and how woodland management can improve the quality of um, ecosystem services that come from our woodlands. And certainly from our point of view as a charity, we want to be able to demonstrate that that's the work that we're doing. So this um, certainly helps us report to the Charities Commission and say, well, look, these are the number of woodland owners that we've visited or we've reached out to, and this is how um, they're starting to improve their woodland stewardship. Essentially, it was done um, by a very clever chap in Oxford who took the tenants of the UKFS and looked at the guidelines and requirements, and I discussed that with him, um, with a group of other people. Um, Dougal Driver, who I think's just gone out of the room, he very kindly gave up his time to um, consider the, uh, the set of questions that we'd developed. We linked that to ecosystem services and developed a score. And this was done by a, a postgraduate from the University of Oxford. And you can tell it's pretty clever stuff because there's uh, lots of decimal po points at the end, which go completely over my head. But I'm assured by my colleague, Dr. Gabriel Hemery, that it's a very robust framework. And um, we certainly look forward to uh, working with Growing in Britain and other partners to um, actually use um, the framework and see how we can um, improve it going through time. And again, we look forward to feedback on that. So the, uh, the Woodland Star Rating, we essentially took the UKFS, which was 105 pages, and I'm sure you'll be fairly glad to know we distilled it down into the, the 30 critical questions that we hope are important to and resonate with woodland managers and owners. And we built it into the, um, the My Forest uh, system and created a, a very straightforward to use um, uh, inter, internet um, based uh, format so that people could actually um, go through and answer the questions. And as you answer the questions, the, uh, uh, you'll see the thermometer on the right hand side goes up the way and uh, eventually, if you're doing all the right things as per the UK forestry standard, you can receive a gold uh, star. Now, when, I, uh, when our uh, internet chap, who, believe me, um, I'm, I'll be surprised if he's ever been in a woodland in, in, in his life, was developing this particular um, facet of the, the My Forest system, he said, hang on a moment, you, you, you cover climate change. Is it not a bit in, inappropriate to have a thermometer? <laughs> I thought, that's, that's a fair point, Richard. That's, that's a very good point. I said, so, Richard, uh, what, what would you suggest? And he says, well, we could put a tree there. And I thought, ooh, I like that idea. Forest is like trees. And he goes, uh, yeah, we could put a squirrel at the bottom. <laughs> I said, no, and sort of face darkened. And he goes, and, uh, and as, the, as the squirrel goes up the tree, the, the, they get more points. And I was like, oh, God, Rich, we, I've been working with you for three years. There's nothing sunk in. And he goes, and as you get silver, the squirrel goes, he scurries a little bit higher. And I thought, oh, Rich, you really got it all wrong. And he goes, and when you get to the gold standard, and I said, oh, what Rich, what Rich? He says, a shotgun comes out and <laughs> humanely controls the squirrel. I thought, mm. just in case the RSPCA are also listening, but you know, appropriately so, of course. Anyway, the, um, one of the important elements of getting a gold star is to make sure that a, a UKFS compliant management plan linked to the Forestry Commission England uh, framework is, is in place. And as I say, the template for that is um, also um, on my forest. So uh, Richard, uh, who is the IT chap, he, he, he got a gold star for that suggestion, for his wood. However, what about the people who didn't get any stars at all? And I'd like to say, there's a, I've got a, a little competition here, and I will send you a Silver Foundation mug, for what it's worth, for anyone who comes up with a better suggestion and then pull your socks up. <laughs> because that's the best we've got at the moment. And that's my name there, and at least I've got one of my socks pulled up, so I'm doing something right. 
Anyway, the notion is here is that what we're, we're trying to do is have something that's slightly fun and light touch and certainly enables people to measure how their, their, um, their woodland management activities are against the UK forestry standard and obviously improve those going uh, forward through time. But behind those questions is actually a, a complex um, set of uh, calculations that we're able to do. So for any woodland property, what we're actually able to start to understand based on activity is what people are doing in terms of the uh, tenets of the, the UK forestry standard from biodiversity through to um, uh, water management. And as I say, going through time, trying to help and assist people move from bronze to gold star or to a, a high standard of woodland stewardship. So in summary, we took the UKFS, we turned it into 30 questions. We enabled people to understand what it was about, hopefully, and start to build up a, a, a portfolio of the way they're, they're working based on their management plan. And then as we talked earlier on, well, today it is, it's about woodland communications, is give people the, the ability to actually say what we're doing in our woodland is good. And, well, whether one chooses to put the certificate on their forest gate or by their bedside, it's entirely up to you. <laughs> and, of course, when we go back to the book about Leo Johnson and, uh, sorry, about the, uh, the, the book published by Leo Johnson and... Uh, uh, Michael Blowfield, perhaps we can start to actually communicate and make people understand the good things that we as foresters are doing in our woodland and hopefully start to develop a bit of appreciation through society. So anyway, I, uh, on uh, a final point, um, as I said, Nikki uh, Robotten's in the uh, audience today. This is Nikki. Nikki, do you, are you still, are you over here? Nikki, are you still looking for woodland owners who may be interested in a good woods visit in this particular area? Just about, yes. We've got four places left. All right. And three people a long way down the line thinking about it. Oh, OK. So we're not looking for a stampede. Uh -huh. If anyone here knows of a wood who, woodlands who are interested, I'd very much like to hear from you. Okie dokie. Well, there's uh, Nikki at the back there. So if there's any woodland owner who would uh, appreciate for uh, a day's advice from a, a professional forester, please um, contact Nikki at the back. And so that just leaves me to say thank you. Um, thank you very much to all the partners um, that have been um, involved in the project and the, the uh, wide range of participants. Thank you very much to Forestry Commission uh, England. Steve um, is in the audience there and uh, his counterpart in uh, the, the southeast of England have been tremendously supportive. Uh, thank you to being q I, uh, I generally think that um, so having read a number of sort of corporate social responsibility um, books in the past and certainly um, some business activities that uh, uh, people have um, uh, carried out or businesses have carried out um, I really do believe that B&Q actually are making a very substantive um, impact on the ground. And, you know, as Julia said, the, the word net positive, well, I think it is a very positive effect that they are, are having on British forestry. And I, I hope that will uh, continue. Thank you very much to um, Gary and Justin for uh, putting today together. Really appreciate that. And finally, thank you very much to the audience for um, uh, listening to me. Thanks.